What is up everyone? On this sunny Saturday evening, I am going to start the 30 inch cinema display video. There it is, sitting under my desk. It's been there since I bought it. As you guys know, we finished the Mac Pro video and the Mac Pro was set up here. In fact, it still is set up. Um, there's the display that we bunged on the desk to try the second GPU. Um, people mentioned about the Chrome bug with the flashing on Lion, so I'm really pleased that people mentioned that. So thank you guys and thank you for all the support on the video. Um, I know it wasn't the most interesting video in the world, but you guys are super supportive. Um, so yeah, looks like that second GPU isn't dead. So I've got that monitor there. I had to clear a little bit of space because I was looking at this laptop today. It's got the uh, typical Acer Aspire black screen issue. Complete pa pain in the ass. But yeah, anyway, we are here to make um, a video about 30 inch cinema display. And the cool thing is, and apologies about talking quite quietly, folks. Kids are in bed. I've only just gotten to sleep. It took forever. So I don't want to wake them up. So you're going to have to put up with my quiet, hushed tones. I'm so sorry. It's just the way it is at the moment. Um, I'm super excited because I was racking my brains as to how I could record an interesting 30 inch cinema display video because it's a beast of a display and it's super beastly in person but no matter what you do on camera you just can't get across the beastliness of the display so instead of just plonking it here on my workbench and showing it to you guys I decided to do something much cooler. This evening we are going to temporarily take away my main monitors, my two 24 inch Dells. We're gonna take them off the desk. I'm gonna leave all the cables dangling because it's all neatly cable managed and stuff as you guys know. And we are gonna plonk that 30 inch cinema display on my main setup. And I am going to fire it up, show it to you guys, start using it and just show you just, yeah, basically show you the beast on my main setup. And we're gonna chat about the display in more depth once we have it hooked up. So that's the plan. I don't really have much more plan than that. So let's begin by clearing this little bit of space and uh, swapping a few things around. All right, guys, we've hit snag number one, my keyboard, and I believe my mouse also. Um, they're both hooked up to, yeah, keyboard and mouse. They're hooked up to my display using the USB hub. So what we'll do is leave this display sat here. Uh, luckily there was enough slack to make the keyboard okay. The mouse is absolutely fine. So we can plonk the 30 in the middle right there. Um, but I'm gonna have to leave this sitting here. Hopefully the USB hub works when the monitor doesn't have any monitor signal. I expect it will. Um, only one way to find out anyway, otherwise it's gonna require quite a lot of rewiring because as you can see, I've worked kind of hard on these looms and stuff and I don't want to ruin it. Okay, so that is the 30 inch cinema display sitting on my desk. Apologies for any dust or whatever. Um, and of course it's not perfect. These speakers have got the pads on the side, um, all of them on like one corner just because they're meant to be lying down. They don't fit lying down under this monitor. Um, so this is all purely temporary, purely completely for fun. Um, let me give you guys a bit of distance on this one because you definitely need it. Oh my Lord. <laughs> Look how sick that display is. It just dwarfs everything, doesn't it? Oh my word, that is glorious. Okay, right, next thing is to get this guy juiced up um, to yank out all of those other display connectors and get just this guy plugged in. So I've got the power supply hooked up and the display plugged into my video card. I've unplugged my HDMI and DVI for the other two monitors. Only bummer is this speaker wire is now too short to reach the second speaker, but that's okay. This is all just for fun anyway. So let's go over here, boot up my system and see what happens. Okay, so we've got some kind of signal. Oh, here we go, come on, baby. Yeah, sweet, okay. Ooh, resolution. So folks, it is fired up. Let's take a look at about this Mac. And we can see in, God, I can't actually read the writing, <laughs> my word. Okay, you can see 
Apple Cinema HD display, 30 inch, 2560 by 1600, powered by my GTX 960. So that's the cinema display. And if you guys wanna see, I haven't rescaled anything, but you gotta check this out. My other monitors are a nice respectable resolution, 1920 by 1200. It's basically the 16 by 10 equivalent of the uh, 1920 by 1080 res obviously just with the extra height um, so you know compared to my 1920 by 1200 monitors this was a full screen calendar so look at the additional real estate that you get and it reminds me of the apple keynote actually um, seeing the additional real estate you know that picture that's in the corner and then all of the extra stuff um, and also here's a spotify window that i had open full screen and as you can see, all that extra space is just incredible. Okay, so before we go any further chatting about the 30 inch cinema display, I am definitely a dual displays guy. No matter how big the display is, like this is a huge canvas, this is a massive workspace, so it gives you loads of real estate working on one application or even two applications side by side. But I still like to have constant monitoring of certain applications on a secondary monitor. And it was kind of tough switching from three monitors back down to two. But over the last few months since changing my setup, I've got used to it. But I definitely need a secondary monitor. Now, pulling up another one of my Dells next to this would be a little bit weird. So, I do have another plan. And there's a gap there. So let's use it. So there we have it. I have popped one of my 20-inch cinema displays next to the 30 inch beast just to give myself a fair chance of demoing this thing because i am definitely accustomed to using two displays so because of the general height of this monster uh, i've used one of these funky acrylic stands i've got another one of these over there with my imac on it my 17 inch imac i highly recommend them they are super cool about 15 20 quid from ebay it's just a piece of acrylic that's been shaped but it perfectly fits the feet of these Apple monitors and iMacs just looks really cool as well uh, so obviously with this kind of setup and I've spoken at length about this in the past before so I'm not going to go deep into it when we talk about multi monitors there are kind of two ways to use multi monitors this way where you have one big display one impressive huge resolution display and then another display off to the side which may or may not be the same model uh, but could well be smaller or whatever um, as like an auxiliary display that is the way that we're using dual displays here so this is the workspace this is the only workspace as you know kind of and then the second display is just there to show information stuff that you want up all the time it's not to actively work from um, the other way of using dual displays or triple displays or multi-monitors in general is using the multiple monitors as one workspace. Now the way that macOS works is it kind of encourages you to use separate applications on separate monitors um, unless it's an application designed to run on more than one monitor such as Final Cut Pro. Uh, although Final Cut Pro 10 has terrible multi-monitor support compared to the older versions. Um, Regardless, when I had my triple monitors, I would definitely span something across all three. Whereas, since I've been using two monitors, I definitely use one monitor as a work monitor and the other one as a secondary, like, slave display. So, in a setup like this, and definitely in this setup, you've got no choice because the resolution is so drastically different. This is 1680 by 1050. It's a 20 inch monitor, kind of standard 20 inch 16 by 10 res. Um, you know, versus 2560 by 1600, it is vastly, vastly different. But here's the example. You've got a full workspace here with huge real estate. And then over here, you've just offloaded everything else. So we've got Spotify, Twitter, and email, and my calendar, and anything else that I need. So that's kind of the way that I use multi-monitors. It means that if you want to go over and reference your calendar or reference email quickly, um, then you don't have to change spaces on your main monitor. Um, so there's that. And also, 
I kind of do this habit as well where um, even if I'm not working actively from the se second monitor I'll have a text edit document because I use text edit quite heavily I have a text e edit document on often with like a list like a to-do list and some notes and things open on the secondary display and also a spreadsheet because there are two spreadsheets that I use a lot for work my work work um, and that will often be open on the second display. Another point to make about having a setup like this, so your main workspace, your main canvas, and a secondary slave display, is in this instance, we have this massive gaping gap in between the two monitors. Now, if I had the same model and same size monitor, like the Dells, it makes sense to put them together. But if you've got two different monitors, then there's no kind of issue having a gap in between them because you're not lining them up for the sake of lining them up. You're not spanning things across the two. Whatever's shown on here is a completely separate entity to whatever's shown on here. Therefore, it doesn't matter if it's over a little bit or there's a speaker in between or whatever. Maybe some people aren't really a fan of that look, um, but to me, this is the, the, the computer. This is the workspace, you know, that is, my computer setup, and then this is just a bonus. That's kind of the way that I look at this sort of multi-monitor setup. And to be perfectly honest, folks, I really don't know how I'm more productive. I definitely feel that when I had three of these lovely 24-inch Dell monitors set up, 1920 by 1200 on each one, all lined up perfectly, and I could span one thing across all three, it was the ultimate setup, it really was. Because you have one display in the middle, you've always got a central point with no bezel, so it works perfectly. And when I say spanning something across multiple displays, I would use the zoom function to do that. So if I was writing uh, a text edit document or a pages document or an email, I would resize the window accordingly. Zoom in in Mac OS so that the whole thing filled the three monitors, then I could just sit back and type. But then again, it's important to remember that I have got really, really bad eyesight. So when I talk about my use cases for multi-monitors, it's going to be different to somebody with, quote, normal eyesight, because somebody could, somebody with full normal eyesight wouldn't need to do that. They would quite happily have their document on one display and they'd be happy with that. Um, so there's definitely that. That is, is something that I'm going to um, enjoy seeing the difference with. Obviously, it's been different with just two monitors anyway, but I don't actively think about the way that I'm using my machine, the way that I'm using my monitors, obviously. So it will be interesting to me to see how I can adapt to this setup. <laughs> I just love the way that these displays look from every angle. They look absolutely fantastic. Looks a bit Frankenstein, obviously. That speaker just plonked there and those cables dangling all looks really awful but just the pure design of the monitors I absolutely love so this is my first legitimately my first use of anything other than a 20 inch cinema display we had these in college so I used them a fair bit even though I took my own MacBook Pro um, we still the 20 inch cinemas were paired with the Mac Pros in one of the Mac labs in college so I used them in college that's the first place I actually properly used a cinema display for a prolonged period of time. I've never used the 23 inch, never once in my life, but these Dells have the same res, um, so it would be a similar experience. They're just an inch smaller. And then this is my first time properly, other than firing it up the other day for that vlog, this is my first time using a 30 inch cinema display, and it is impressive. It is colossal, it is massive. And I think if I put anything other, you know, anything else back on my desk now, it would feel really weird. But Having this here kind of grounds you and makes you realize just how huge this is. <laughs> it's insane. Now, one thing I'd like to point out is, my God, is it warm here? And I'm not just saying that for the sake of saying it. The LED displays are stone cold and you kind of forget what it's like to sit in front of one of these old school monitors. It is warm. It really is. So you've got this huge 30 inch beast here, this 20 giving it to me from the side, then of course the machine itself getting warm over there. Um, it's a little bit toasty here and it's actually reminding me of how it was when I had my Dell 2009 W? W 2000, 2009 W's? I think that's what they were called. Um, 
those two on my desk because it would get toasty. And since I've treated myself to these LED monitors, and I also got a wonderful donation of uh, a significant chunk of the LED monitor setup, uh, I haven't felt that warm, that warm essence on my face, but I, it's you can feel it. It it radiates. I can put my hand near the, the screen. It is radiating heat. A lot of it, actually. The 20 is much cooler, much, much cooler. But the 30, my God. 20 hasn't been on as long, to be fair. So let's get a little bit technical and boring here for a second. Um, I've always noticed when browsing Mac Tracker that there are, in fact, two... Look at all this space. Blink and neck. There are, in fact, two 30-inch cinema displays listed here. So the first one that was released... Um, is the 30-inch DVI, which was released in June of 2004. That's when Steve Jobs famously stood on the stage and showed that slide with the G46800 Ultra DDL, and everyone was just like, whoa, because it was a beasting hunk of a card. Um, anyway, um, check this out. The other one that's listed is the late 2005, and there is quite some significant spec difference. So firstly, brightness, 270 CDM squared, this one, 400. And the contrast ratio, uh, 400 to 1. This one, 700 to 1. Response time a little bit different at 16 milliseconds versus 14 milliseconds, not the quickest panels. Of course, the pixel dens density, uh, pitch, and resolutions are exactly the same. But in terms of response time, contrast ratio, and brightness, they're, in fact, quite different. Um, there's also a slightly improved viewing angle. There's 8 degrees viewing angle improvement on the newer model. Uh, the colours are exactly the same. So quite a big difference there, folks. From what I can see, everything else is exactly the same. Um, so I was curious as to what display I had. So I bunged the serial number into the Apple website. And I have a cinema display 30-inch DVI early 2007. So I've got one with um, one of the newer ones, which I was kind of more certain of anyway because this was purchased with a Mac Pro, or at least I purchased it with a Mac Pro, so it makes sense that this came with a Mac Pro. So I find that fairly interesting. That's something to look out for when buying a 30-inch cinema display on eBay. I presume that the majority of 30-inch displays out there in the wild are going to be these ones, the newer ones, simply because... Um, I believe Apple introduced price cuts as time went on, as well as the fact that when these 2004 ones came out, you had to have a Power Mac G5, you had to have the 6800 Ultra. There were very specific scenarios that you needed at home already, or you also needed to purchase, which is extremely expensive, to run the 30-inch cinema display. So I, I would hazard a guess that a large percentage, 80 plus percent of the ones that are listed on eBay, maybe even more, are going to be the newer type. Um, maybe not specifically 2005, obviously, like mine's listed as 2007, but newer than this first generation 30 inch anyway, because I bet that was a rarity back then to be able to purchase one. Um, just as a guess, anyway, just as a guess. So that is that, and you guys can get an idea of how much I'm fitting on this, this damn screen here. I mean, just as comparison, Look at this, get these two windows on this 20 inch and bung this one on here too. Look at that for difference. Look at that, I mean, I, I, I am a massive fan of the 1680 by 1050 resolution. I think it's a great res. Uh, I used it for years and years. My Dell 2009Ws had this resolution and they were my main monitors for a huge chunk of my life until I upgraded to the U24 12Ms. Um, but yeah, this is just out of this world. This is something else, something completely, completely different. So before I went, I just had to open up Final Cut and look at this, look at this. So um, this is exactly how I work. I've got all my clips over here and all my projects and then my main editing window here. So this was the size of my editing window before. Uh, look at all this extra space. So what I'm going to do is bung this in full screen. We're going to take a look. So that's the 1920 by 1200. This, if I can even click on it, is the 2560 by 1600. 
it completely transforms the interface. And my God, is that a lot of space to work on. So obviously this project is very simple, single um, you know, timeline, not anything crazy going on. Let me see if I've got anything a bit more complex. So here's an old vlog from ages ago, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Um, I've, I must have this library on here still because I needed another project probably. That's why this is on here. But you can see um, with a few more things in the timeline, so this has got some audio and some titling and stuff up here. Um, you can see that, yeah, wow, there's a load of space to work with here. And it wouldn't surprise me if this is too far off 1920 by 1080. It wouldn't surprise me. It's not quite 1080p, um, but if you look at that relative to the size of this, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if that's nearly full full resolution. Yeah, check it out. It's fitting to the display at 94%, but of course I could make it 100% and then just reduce my height a little bit to fit it in. So at 100%, that's how we're looking. Still quite a lot of timeline room. So I am very, very impressed by that. That is a lot of space. And additionally, just looking at a few of my clips here, just seeing how gorgeous it looks. Because that's one thing about the cinema display. It may not look as sexy on web pages and that these days because of how um, yellow the color temperature is in comparison to the LED display. Like the LED displays look super crisp with like web pages and general OS browsing. Um, you know, your finder window looks super crisp and lovely and cool. But here it's sort of warm yellow and maybe the yellowness might make it appear a bit smudgy. But as soon as you get into a piece of content, it just comes to life. And that's exactly what this display is for. It is for the warmth of colour. And yes, just scrubbing through this vid, apologies if it's making anyone feel sick, it just looks gorgeous. It looks really, really stunning. Look at the vivid colours everywhere. And this is just, you know, something that I've recorded with my little camera. I just got a little bit distracted watching this vlog when I realised that it's two years old. It's over two years, just a few days over two years um, since Mario Kart 8 Deluxe came out. So it's crazy. Life is just racing by. Anyway, um, I'm going to put this video on hold for a little while and I'm going to use this setup for about a week or so. I'm going to give my thoughts and opinions in the next clip and also, yeah basically continue the video. One other cool thing I'm going to do is put this whole setup on the watt meter to see how much electricity we are sucking from the wall because when I moved in one of my biggest biggest things was making everything as power efficient as possible and definitely a huge consumption of power would be these two displays versus the two LED displays. This guy uses a 150 watt power adapter this guy uses a smaller one, but I can't quite remember. Is it a 60 or an 80 or whatever? I don't know. But anyway, um, we'll look at all that. We'll see exactly how much juice we're sucking from the wall with this setup total versus the other setup. And that'll be a very interesting comparison. So for now, we're going to leave it like this and I'm going to use it and I will report back to you guys. It is weeks and weeks later and I've had these two sitting on my desk for a huge chunk of time, way longer than I thought. Um, and today they're coming back off my desk. <laughs> okay, uh, I've just finished editing this video, editing the part that you guys have just seen. So it's all fresh in my head. And I started mentioning the power consumption right at the end there. My gosh, I'm on a pay-as-you-go meter. And as much of a pain in the ass that it is, 
and I am going to get it changed at some point. It's great because you can see when you're spending a lot of money on electricity. So the other day when I put these guys in, I stuck 20 quid on our little electricity stick thing, put it in, and then a matter of days later, it was beeping and it was on the emergency electricity supply. And I was like, what? Granted, we had a massive um, kind of sunny weather hit. So we caught up on all the washing, washed all of the bedding. And so the washing machine like must have been going sort of four times a day for a, a good few days. Um, but the main source of the power consumption was definitely these guys. Now I have cheated a little bit. I've put these guys on the meter and I haven't recorded it so we'll do it again. But what I haven't done is put the old displays back on the setup and compared the reading. So that is where we are going to find the um, difference in power consumption. Now to be perfectly honest folks, even if for argument's sake I loved every single thing about these monitors and I wanted to keep them on my main setup, I honestly, and it's no exaggeration, I would not be able to afford to do it. Because talking about electricity consumption, everything, as I said in the last clip, I've gone out of my way to make everything as efficient as possible in my home. So all of my appliances are like A++ energy rated, so they use barely anything considering the type of appliance that they are. Dishwasher, washing machine, fridge, freezer, uh, all ticking over using very little electricity. Um, I've got an extremely efficient power supply in my Hackintosh, an 80 plus platinum power supply. I've got all LED lighting in the whole of my home. Um, I don't have any outdoor floodlights or any of that sort of thing. Um, the only thing that I have not really done yet, and it's just a money thing, I haven't got an LED backlit TV downstairs. Once I have that, then everything will be as efficient as possible um, at home. So having these guys up here is just a crazy power draw. And uh, yeah, I, I can honestly say with my current, you know, kind of overpriced electricity plan with the pay-as-you-go meter, I honestly wouldn't be able to afford it or I'd have to take a, a significant hit somewhere else in my life budget to be able to power these friggin' things. But leaving electricity aside, because we'll talk about that at the end of the video with the readings, uh, let's talk displays. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, these displays, and this 30 in particular, really shines when you're looking at content. So, you know, this is a bit of a crappy kind of filmed vid with lighting all over the place, but even so, it makes content come to life. It just makes things look gorgeous. Um, videos, films, not that I really watch videos or films on this setup uh, anymore. It's, you know, I'm, I'm here to work. Once I've finished work, I'm, I'm done. Uh, or YouTube, you know, which I don't really consider work these days. But you know what I'm saying, folks. Content looks gorgeous on here. Photos, videos, that sort of thing. All looks really nice. But the vast majority of what I do on this system now is sort of web browser based stuff um, and it doesn't look as nice because this display is quite old so it doesn't have the most even brightness across there are a few patches and on, on a white web page you can really notice it um, and it is just kind of as I say you know yellowy and kind of grimier looking than a modern display and that's because of the age of this monitor as well of course you know um, it is a far superior viewing experience than my other monitors. I mean, it would be. It came out as like 10 times the price, I guess. Um, but that's just for content, you know. This this is a lovely, lovely display, but not suited to what I do. To be honest, I would leave... I w if, if these didn't consume the power, I would leave both of these monitors on my setup just for the uh, the resolution. I absolutely love the resolution and I love the design. I love the way my setup looks with them. I could tidy up all of the cabling if they were here on a permanent basis and make everything look absolutely gorgeous. But it's not meant to be, folks. It's not meant to be. I don't have a clue what I'm gonna do with the 30 because I love it to pieces and I don't know if I'm gonna build a part with it straight away. Um, but then again, I'm not going to plug it in and use it here just because of the amount of electricity it uses. So I really don't know. But 
one thing I wanted to mention is when using these two monitors, and this is something I really like about um, the cinema display lineup, and I'm assuming that the 23 inch gives the same experience, even though these are a uh, different resolution and a different screen size, something that you drag over is pretty much, give or take, the same size. So a window here is the same size as a window here. Now this monitor is closer to me than that one, but as you can see, it's pretty much the same size. So I kind of like that. You know what you're gonna get when you drag it over. It's not like back in the day when you'd get a crappy um, 1024 by 76843 monitor by the side of you and, uh, and drag something over and it was huge in comparison to your main display. It's not one of those scenarios. It's, you know, it, it perfectly lines up. The windows are the same size. So that's something that I've enjoyed, but I have missed being able to drag a full-sized window over and have it on the second display without any resizing issues. Uh, it's not amazingly convenient having a 30 and a 20. So uh, yeah, that's my that's my experience basically, folks. It's been a really fun little experience. Um, the 30 inch is a beast and I love it, I love it, I love it. But what I don't love is how hot it gets. It's boiling. What I don't love is how much power it consumes and I'm not crazy keen on how um, kind of bleh, all like web pages and stuff look. I mean, web pages full of color and with, you know, a, a dark theme look pretty stunning actually because the colors are richer on this display. But for stuff using a lot of white, white is basically the issue because white isn't really white. And I love the warm color temperature. Don't get me wrong, makes content look stunning. But yeah, you guys know what I'm trying to say. I'm just saying the same thing over and over again. So gorgeous displays. It's been great fun, but I am ready to put my uh, Dell monitors back on the setup, even though they are not going to look half as sexy as these two. So first of all, let's shut down this system. And what I've decided to do to measure the power is use a real life scenario. So we're gonna plug the entire setup into the meter. So that includes my Hackintosh, the speakers, the displays, and everything else that goes with it. So the audio interface is powered up and all of that jazz. We're gonna sit the machine at the desktop, no applications running, just let it sit there idle, and we're gonna take a reading. So it's quite easy to do that because all my whole setup is just on one socket. So let's plug this guy in and let's plug this guy in. All right guys, so the system has been powered on for a few minutes. As you can see, no applications running, speakers are switched on and both displays are at full brightness. That's one thing I didn't mention by the way, brightness on this guy is stunning. I, for the first time in my life, have used a display where I have to decrease the brightness when using it at night time. So, wow, awesome. Um, I do it on my MacBook Pro all the time when I'm in different environments, but normally at my desk, I've always had whatever monitor I've had at full brightness. This 30 inch gives off a lot of brightness. So guys, check this out. Doing nothing. My computer is doing nothing. I'm just sitting at the desktop and we are consuming 240 watts, 239, 238, 239, you can call it 240, which is bonkers. And as if by magic, the old monitors are back on my setup. Not perfect yet, cabling a bit messy, not even perfectly lined up, but we're in the exact same state. So the same stuff powered on, machine is there doing nothing, no applications running, both monitors sitting there. Uh, let's dig out my little torch and have a look. <laughs> 103. Stable 103. 104, 102. 103. There you have it. So, let's do a little bit of maths. 240 minus 103. 137 watts more consumed by the setup with the cinema displays. So just for a little bit of kind of comparison then, 
240 watts used by the setup with the cinema displays is equivalent to, in Philips Hue light bulbs, which use roughly 6 watts of electricity with all colours at full, I believe, that's equivalent to running 40 Philips Hue light bulbs at full brightness all switched on, which is a very unrealistic scenario for a normal sized home. Let's look at 103 watts divided by 6. That's equivalent to only running 17 Philips Hue bulbs, which is far more realistic. So as you guys can see, this is far more economical and also freezing much better on the temperature front in a room that's already getting too hot. Isn't it crazy? I'm now in my own home paying my own bills. I wouldn't have even dreamed of thinking about electricity consumption before, but it's all I care about now. I'm sacrificing screen size, resolution, stunning design. It just uses too much electricity. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, these U2412s are stunning displays anyway. I absolutely love them. Uh, they are really great. They're, they're looking gorgeous. Um, so yeah, that has been my little adventure. And just to clarify, you know, obviously I, I own a kettle. I'm not saying that everything in my home is really low powered, but I just live with using quite little electricity considering how much of a nerd I am. Um, you know, obviously we have a kettle, so that's three kilowatts or near enough, but it's only for short bursts, just a few minutes, you know. We don't use electric fan heaters, we don't use heated towel rails, we don't have an electric shower, so I'm not accustomed to a high electricity bill. All LED lighting, uh, just everything. The appliances, as I say, A++ or whatever. Um, but when I put those monitors on and it doubled the power consumption of this setup, it just knocked me for six. It just, I just couldn't believe it. So. There you go. I know this has turned into a little bit of kind of like a kind of very much focused on power video, <laughs> but that is the video on the 30 inch cinema display. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Sorry for the wait. It's a great bit of kit, but too much of a monster for me at this stage. So no idea what I'm going to do with it. I guess you'll find out in a future video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all again really soon.